Your Life, an American television tradition. And now, here he is, Mr. This Is Your Life himself, Ralph Edwards. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Those of you who were watching This Is Your Life last week saw us do something we've never done before. We pulled a double surprise. At the end of the Johnny Grant story, which you saw last week, we surprised one of the participants in his life, famous movie star and glamour girl, Jane Mansfield. You saw it just up to the surprise where I said, next week, Jane Mansfield, this is your life. But we kept one camera rolling so that you could see tonight the surprise, Jane's reaction, the reaction of Bob Hope, Johnny Grant, and all the others, the bedlam, the confusion, as the stagehands came in to uh, ready the stage for Jane Mansfield's life, which we did a few minutes later before the same studio audience. Now, here's what happened right here on this stage one week ago. Watch. Well, tonight, this is your life, Jane Mansfield. <laughs> this is your life. Come on, Jane, it's your life. We're going to relive in just a few moments, and uh, we'll all see you in a week from tonight. Now, Johnny Grant, good night to you, Johnny. Thank you very much. I don't mean that we're pushing you out while the body is still warm. Bob, did you think it might be you? Oh, no, not at all. <laughs> You bring in the scenery. Take away the Johnny Grant scenery. Let down the Jane Mansfield scenery. Now, Jane, will you come with me to our chair of honor, so recently occupied by your very good Johnny Grant. You help her over here. By Johnny Grant, where in just a moment we'll unfold the wonderful story of your meteoric rise to stardom. And now here they are. Your This Is Your Life host, Ralph Edwards, and his glamorous guest, Jane Mansfield. Here we go again, Jim. Thank you, Bob Warren. Oh, man, how do you feel? I, I just really can't talk. I can't, we, I just, uh, <laughs> We just shoot poor old Johnny off here, you know, and uh, oh, brought God. you on. His was a marvelous life, and yours is, is really going to be wonderful. Oh. We have a lot to tell about Jane Mansfield, who in the space of seven short years has leaped from total obscurity to one of the most publicized movie stars of the present day. <laughs> Seldom since the halcyon days of the silent screen has there been a motion picture personality whose publicity has so blanketed the world. <laughs> I remember that golden age of Hollywood, Ralph, and Jane Mansfield is a modern day image of that kind of glamour and ballyhoo. This is the voice of authority on Hollywood, past and present, currently syndicated on 267 radio stations in the United States, Canada, Mexico, South America, and Australia. Jimmy Fiddler in Hollywood. Oh! Hello, Jimmy. Wonderful. Oh, really Bless your heart. Why do you compare Jane Mansfield with the glamour gals of yesteryear, Jimmy? Not glamour gals. They were the glamorous ladies of the silent screen. Gloria Swanson, Carol Lombard, Greta Garbo, even the sex girls, uh, Clara Bow and Jean Harlow. Mm -hmm. You know, they lived in a world apart. They lived in a world of dazzle and razzle-dazzle and glitter. They rode around Hollywood in their Rolls Royce limousines and they had chauffeurs and uh, sometimes footmen in smart costumes, smart uniforms. Uh, well, they dined and they played at the old Garden of Allah. They danced under the stars in the grand ballroom of the Hotel Hollywood. Uh, believe me, those were the wonderful days, but they have passed on, Ralph, they have passed on, that is, uh, until they've been revived in the person of Jane Mansfield and her way of living. Oh, yes. thank you, Jimmy. Oh. We have but to look at Jane to see what you mean, Jimmy, by glamour as to her way of life. We'll watch that unfold during the next half hour. Thank you, Jimmy Fiddler, for painting the picture of old Hollywood. Ralph, well, it was indeed a pleasure, indeed a pleasure, and Jane continued good luck to you. And I do mean you. Oh, thank you, Jimmy. <laughs> thank you so much. Well, there it is, Jane. There it is. My home. The house you live in, a cozy 20-room cottage <laughs> with 13 baths nestled on five acres of ground, surrounded by gardens, swimming pool, waterfalls, your own private shrine. Why do you live like this, Jane? Oh, we just, we, we call it home. We have quite a few children, you know. Yes. Uh, and you feel, too, I believe, that maybe a movie star could live this oh, way? Oh, I do. I think that, uh, I think everyone should live like he wants to live, and no matter how small it is or how big it is. Right. Your, your life is a waking dream where you live in a make-believe world created for you largely through your own efforts. So. Thank you. Let's go back and, uh, 
See how it all began. I better sit down. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> April 19th. Uh, 1933, the infant Vera Jane Palmer first sees light of day at the respectable hour of 9.07 in the morning oh. at the Bryn Mawr Hospital, Bryn Mawr, Pennsylvania. You know things I don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know why you were around and I wasn't. Eh? You're baptized in the Methodist Church the following June. You're a happy baby, and when you first begin to talk, you name your favorite doll Maury Tory. Now, uh, what uh, did that mean? That was a big rag doll. I, I, she was wonderful. She was my dearest friend. I didn't have any brothers or sisters, and that was my, my friend, Maury Tory. Did it come from Mary Mary Quite Contrary or something like that? We couldn't quite uh, get the source of that, but... Uh, I, I don't know where it came from, but... Uh, well, anyhow, in 1936, your father... A prominent attorney dies, leaving you an only child and your mother, who goes back to her profession as school teacher in the fall of that year. Vera Jane and I had the best times together, Ralph. Yes, you recognize the voice of your mother, of course. Yeah. Now, Mrs. Harry L. Pierce of Dallas, Texas. Here she is with your stepfather, Mr. Pierce. <laughs> <laughs> Doggone it, Johnny Grant got my handkerchief, and I know. <laughs> uh, when did uh, Jane first begin to dream of being a movie star, Mrs. Pierce? <laughs> Have you got a handkerchief on you, Mr. Pierce? Johnny Grant got mine, and I. Uh... Uh. Oh, Axel Grunberg, you got one. Someone run one down, will you? Because Bob Warren, you have one. Thank you very much. Oh, no. I just wrote her a letter this afternoon. Well, you've got one already. Now, how do you like that? Oh, I'll dear. keep this, Bob. I, Mrs. Pears, uh, when did you first begin to dream uh, of uh, Janie's being a movie star? When did she begin? Well, when Janie was a little girl, six or seven years old, Ralph, her idol was Shirley Temple. And we used to sing, on the good ship, <laughs> lollipop. Yep. That's I right. shielded her from every unpleasantness uh -huh. and built a sort of pink lollipop world for her. <laughs> As she grew older, she acquired pictures of actresses and <laughs> plastered her room with them, didn't she, Mr. Pierce? Yes, she used to sit in the middle of a big bed and surrounded with pillows and make believe she was a movie star. Well, uh, you, you gave her singing and dancing lessons, and you yourself taught her uh, dramatics, I believe, uh, Ms. Pierce. Right? Yes, I did, Ralph. And then as she grew older, she had piano and violin lessons. And in fact, Philip Williams from SMU taught Janie, and he had hopes of seeing her in Carnegie Hall. She was that gifted. And sometimes uh, she was a little mischievous. Eh? Remember, <laughs> Janie, come, let's come on over here and, and tell us about the time that you entered the uh, soap contest, Janie. Oh, dear. Mm -hmm. just sit here and well, mm -hmm. I could still get arrested, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think, that, don't mention the soap company, and I think they'll forgive you. I, I don't know. I always wanted triplets, so I think it was actually more than that of my own, or twins or something, and I read in Ladies' Home Journal magazine, <laughs> And they have always one big page of perfume with soap. And it said to each new baby born in this year, I give a, a free cake of soap. And to triplets or quintuplets, uh, triplets got a whole case. So I wrote in, <laughs> I was, I think, nine years old or something. And I said I had quintuplets. <laughs> oh, well, one morning, a singing postman came with all the soap in the world. I could hardly see him behind the boxes. And, and, and said, are you, are you, uh, this name? I named the twi the triplets, uh, Jammy, Sammy, and Pammy, I remember. <laughs> well, it's a good thing I'm not a writer. I would never have been successful. <laughs> and the first thing I knew about it, Ralph, was when all that soap arrived at our house. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. and Mrs. Harry L. Pierce, thank you for coming here from oh. Dallas to be with your daughter tonight. You'll see Jenny a little later.